You know what we're hearing in the background right now. It's what Chip and Mike and everyone, Pat O'Day, they've all been talking about. Try to get that noise back. That is the old Budweiser, the old piston-powered, the vintage boat on the lake right now. And Chip, this has got to be kind of nostalgic for you. Um, that, that boat uh, was a nemesis of mine. Bill Munty, I think, lost his life trying to beat that big Griffin-powered Budweiser. That engine was actually a bomber engine. Bill Muncy had a smaller fighter engine, and for three or four years, literally threw himself trying to beat that boat and couldn't do it. Bill died in Acapulco, Mexico. They built a new boat for me that I raced against that boat that we had a great year with in 1982 and kind of made my career. So this boat is in effect, though, been rebuilt. It's been refurbished, restored by the folks at the Hydroplane Museum, right? It, it is. We have a wonderful Hydroplane Museum here in Seattle, just outside of Kent. That boat there is a very famous boat. Uh, it was driven by Jim Cropfield, who lost his life in that boat just nine or ten months after Bill Muncy lost his life. Now you can see that the driver is totally exposed there as boat is to the boat you're seeing today there in the canopy. And that boat right there in Dean's death, that was the 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 instigator to go to the capsules. From that point on, we started belting in, and then two years later we got the canopy and then we got the air system. So uh, that was a very lethal time in the sport. I want to mention to our director and to our sound guy, we're going to bring Mike Fitzsimmons in on this because, Mike, you've often talked about, as a kid, what great sound that is. And yeah. you used to come down off of the hill oh. down here to the lake. That was music. I cut more classes for that <laughs> sound than I did for any other uh, reason when I was in school. Let me tell you, if they ran every day, I'd have never gotten an education. <laughs> and, and, and that boat in particular had a much different sound. As I said, that's a Rolls-Royce Griffin, a bomber engine. And I hated the sound of that boat because it was so dominant. It had that unique sound. And it was the only boat that you could ever hear coming from behind. It was so loud because you had a lot of noise coming from your engine, but you could still hear that thing coming after you. Of course, that's David Williams, the uh, director of the uh, Hyde Plain Race Boat Museum behind the wheel. And he says, you know, I'm the only driver in the pits who has no pressure on him whatsoever. I just have a grand old time because I win every time I take the wheel. And you know what? Every head stops and turns to oh, the yeah. water, especially all the guys who are in the pits working on these, these turbine engines or not. They turn and they look out to the water when they see boats like this out there. Absolutely. They do. This is, this is what we all fell in love with, those of us that grew up here in this area. That noise and to see the driver's head out there and these are just beautiful shots. Um, you know when Art Oberto sponsored uh, Jim Arby's um, Oh Boy Oberto, which was at first a Rolls Royce a powered boat, and then when it made a mid season change to turbine, Art told him he was going to buy a, a set of Voice of the Theater speakers and put a tape recording of a Rolls Royce on there when he went by because it was too quiet. <laughs> just too quiet. Now that's yeah. a 12 cylinder engine. Uh, 600 cubic inches bigger than the Rolls Royce. In, in its day, when it was really running and operating and racing, what kind of speeds would you hit in a boat like that? Those boats were about 170 to 175, as opposed to 190 to 195 now. Um, these boats were a lot heavier. That was probably a 7,000 pound boat, very heavy. In the the idea of that boat was let's just build a big, heavy, stable boat and put a ton of power in it, and it was just brute horsepower. There was a Ron Jones creation in there, and you notice that the, the sponson and deck area on the right side is wider than on the left side because the whole engine and cockpit was cantered to the left-hand side. Thought that they'd get it through the corners a little bit better that way, uh, so it was an offset uh, uh, type of hull cab over, of course, and and uh, um, that that big Griffin engine uh, was a uh, it was quite a quite a brute. There weren't a whole lot of those around, actually. Only a few teams over the years used them. You know, it's been a few years since we've talked about Budweiser. They yeah. left the sport a while back. A lot of folks said that this sport might not survive. Very little taking uh, taking the money out of the sport, and yet it has continued uh, here at Seafair and other spots around the country. Yes, love him or hate him, Bernie Little was a dynamic figure in unlimited hydroplane racing, and. He was actually best friend with August Bush from the Anheuser-Busch family. So the, the Anheuser-Busch company put a lot of money into the sport. They had the national television coverage. And they were very, very good for unlimited hydroplane racing. A great run by David Williams in uh, the beautiful U1 
Miss Budweiser, what a great traditional boat. And again, you can see these boats if you go to the Hydroplane Museum. Oh, there are a lot of them, and ju not just boats, all kinds of, of, uh, of uh, artifacts from the uh, early years of racing, you bet. But it's cool to see them on the move here on Lake oh, Washington, yeah. no doubt. Well, this week we turned back time on Lake Washington. It happened on Friday. It did. Watch what happened when our own Chip Hanauer here climbed inside his old boat, the Atlas Van Lines, in a vintage race. Well, the first thing to understand about these engines is a World War II fighter aircraft engines, and they're really hard to start. They're really temperamental. It's like playing the piano. You have a fuel mix, you have a prime button, so you're really busy. In fact, your hands aren't even on the steering wheel. So really, when it comes to running vintage boats, getting it started for me is about three quarters of the battle. But this boat is really special for me. This boat is kind of like getting together with your first girlfriend. I mean, this boat was the boat that I really first had success with. And it was really special running out there with the boat that I had to fight so hard against that Miss Budweiser is a Griffin-powered engine that's got 600 cubic inches more than I had in the Atlas Van Lines. I mean, it was built very quickly. We went out in the first two races and had really very little luck. The boat was really dangerous. When we got to the Gold Cup in 1982, and Detroit, it all came together. We finally had time to flip the boat upside down, make the changes we wanted, and the boat was a rocket ship. And that that race kind of made my career because we had an epic battle down the backstretch with the Budweiser head and me trying to catch up and the boat flying out of the air. Yeah, look at this tremendous charge by Hanenor. How he's keeping the boat under control is completely beyond me. That was a day I'll never forget. And if I had to quit racing right after that, that would have been fine. So days like today when I can get back together with uh, that old boat and to have that Budweiser next to me, it just brings back a lot of great memories. But I'm also really grateful to the restoration crew from the Unlimited Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum because these guys are all volunteers. They work nothing but long, hard hours, and they put together a beautiful race boat that, as you can see, performs really well. So today, I've been coming to Seafair for, I don't know, 40 years, but today, man, eh, today was pretty special. It's nice to look back, isn't it, and remember those days. It is. You know, getting to drive that old boat that had so much meaning to me in my career, it's like getting to go on a day with your first love again, you know. It was really fun. And then to have that competition right next to me in that old Budweiser boat, uh, thank you so much, Museum. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I love that comparison.